Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, the next edition of Linux Mint Debian Edition has been dropped in beta this last week. It was the 25th. I haven't watched DistroWatch enough lately to notice it, so uh, I wanted to go ahead and uh, dive on over into this. This is called Debbie. So LMDE4 Debbie. This is a beta release. I did find a couple bugs in it. They were fairly minor, but I'll show you how I fixed them. Hopefully they will be resolved by the time the live um, the the release is, is actually out. Or maybe it's just a, an issue with my old version of VirtualBox. But I didn't have any other issues with it other than other than that. Installer is pretty good. We'll kind of look at the installer, but I'll just go ahead and jump on into the system as I have it installed uh, in a little bit here as well. So of course, if you are unfamiliar with LMDE, this is a Linux Mint version based on Debian instead of Ubuntu. It's always been something that they've worked on in case Ubuntu goes over the hills crazy, like they might actually be starting to do. Um, and uh, it's kind of their exit strategy if Ubuntu ends up being... Uh, being a problematic distro for whatever perspective, so they can jump to it. And frankly, I think with Linux Mint Debian Edition 4, what I've seen on it on a very short basis so far, and I think I might actually install it to run a little bit more, uh, what I've actually seen of it is it actually looks as though it's getting very, very close. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, have a look. So they do still have a 64 and a 32-bit version. So, and this is, of course, a brand new version coming out based on Debian Buster. So uh, if you are running a 32-bit system or you need that type of functionality, we still have that option within this within this build, which is actually something I predicted uh, a while back, uh, saying that the next version of Linux Mint Debian Edition, although the next version of Linux Mint will probably not because Ubuntu is dropping 32-bit. I said I, I believe that they will continue the 32-bit version of LMDE as long as Debian does, and Debian probably will for all eternity, um, at least until the last 32-bit computers have are completely, completely gone from the whole worldwide. It is a beta, so there's no upgrade path to this. Uh, don't worry about it, but if you are running the beta, there should be an upgrade path to the stable release uh, as soon as it's done. In fact, they are telling us that. You can uh, go over to the bug reports. Now, the, the little bugs I found here are not listed over there yet. I'll keep an eye on it, and um, uh, it might be something I, I might submit, or I might just say, hey, here's the video. This is kind of my submission. So um, I don't actually have accounts to log into all those places, and uh, I'd rather a few guys are more into that than do that. And maybe, like I said, maybe it's just an issue with my virtual machine. If I install it on real hardware and I encounter the same issues, then... I'll probably go ahead and do that. So we do have download mirrors all across the whole world. There's 32 and 64-bit download mirrors. It is a little bit bigger of an ISO. I believe the last one was 1.6 gig. This is about 2 gig. And so you can grab the torrent or you can just grab it from a variety of different places. So once again, they are hitting the field with full professionality in their beta releases. And that is a totally, totally awesome thing. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy into a virtual machine as the installer. I just want to kind of show you guys what the... Um, what the installation options are looking like here. Let me make sure I can find my desktop view, start our machine, and transition over. So on first boot, uh, this of course being a Debian edition, we have our basic start. We have a start in compatibility. We have a start with NVIDIA drivers. So if you are running NVIDIA stuff, you have a option right out of the gate, which is a good enough thing. I did, I like, I can't remember if the installer has changed, but it was extraordinarily easy to use. And the entire setup literally took less than, I think it was less than 10 minutes. It might have even been less than five. Uh, so not really sure, but uh, it, is, it was a very flawless system. I have had the issue in the past with the previous version of LMDE where it did not want to uh, format the disks correctly. That was not an issue this time either, so everything worked right out of the box. So let's go ahead and wait for it to boot up. We got our desktop audio sound, and here we are. I do actually recall it starting out um, full screen the last time I ran this. It might just be a difference of how I have these two virtual boxes configured. All I really wanted to show you here is just the installer anyway. Uh, like I said, I think it went full screen for me, uh, but I can't remember. Maybe it, maybe it didn't, and it was just such a fast installation. So here is the installer. Um, so we have the basic LMDE installer. Hit your next. 
hit your language, hit your region, hit your keyboard layout, give it your name. Through my super secret password, that's definitely not one, two, three. Now, this is the part we're not going to move beyond this so I don't uh, wreck the disk that's in here. But after this, so here you're just going to go ahead and do this. Um, just select what your disk is. You can do manual partitioning. Um, we're not going to go ahead and step, click through the very next screen. Just select the disk you like, grub, push the next button, and it installs. I mean, it's literally that fast. Uh, very, very nice setup. So now let's go ahead and uh, I'll actually boot into the one that I already have installed. So we'll be back, right back with that. Okay, so here we are landing on the desktop. So of course, Cinnamon 4, so that's the layout. Again, I'm not a huge fan of how this layout is. I do have a video about how you can convert uh, how you can convert this new panel size and basic functionality back to the old version. Even though you can actually go through the first steps and choose the more traditional, I do actually like the larger panels. I do like the look of this over the traditional layout. I just don't like the functionality. So what I'm doing on my work computers now is I'm keeping the modern layout, but then I'm doing the tweaks to convert the, the function of the modern layout to the way that I like it. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. Of course, on the welcome, we have our basic welcome screen. We're going to start up with our system snapshots, our update manager, uh, choosing your layout, system settings, software manager, and our firewall. Okay, the, of course, the new version of Linux Mint brought with us the system report system. So yeah, we're going to ignore installing language packs. Um, yeah, um, I'm 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 a, a lame American. I only speak one language. So you know, of course, here's information about the device and crash reports. So it will never send any information unless you explicitly click that button. So there we go. That should be cleared out. Our updates manager is the same as we would expect it. Uh, we can view, uh, let's see if we can view our kernels in here somewhere as well. I can't remember if they're in here or not. They should be. Huh, not sure. Not sure what, uh, unless they moved it for me, I don't remember exactly where I put it. But let's go ahead and uh, double check the, the kernel version we're reusing because that's always important. You name R. So we are at 419. So... Uh, I like that kernel. That's a good kernel. So you're not going to have the absolute latest. Yes, it is possible to add the newest stuff. I actually did a video about that, I believe, last time I was running LMDE. I had LMDE. I think I upgraded to the latest kernel. I was running Plasma on it. I mean, it was a fun, fun, fun batch when I, when I ran it last. Um, but anyway, there are, I'm going to mention here, a couple of issues um, that I did encounter uh, when we first started. When you go through your first steps, one of the early steps, which is not listed right here because I've already done it, is installing multimedia codecs. So there's a button for installing multimedia codecs. Uh, when I went to install that the very first time, it failed on me. It says, fix broken packages first. Like, well, what's all that about? I go down to the update manager, and the update manager said everything was up to date. System was perfectly fine. So I booted into the terminal and do a sudo apt update and enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. Um, and I do hate the fact that they added the asterisks in there, by the way. Uh, there is a way to get rid of that. Um, so here, um, it did tell me that there were updates. So despite my update manager telling me the system was up to date, the apt update actually told me that there were packages to install. So I went ahead and ran the updates to the installer, but there were some errors that showed up. And uh, the errors that showed up, the first is there was complaining about Plymouth themes uh, was lacking a package or that was being called by something. So I did a sudo apt install Plymouth-themes that fixed that one. And then there was a crypt setup issue, uh, possibly because I did not set the system up in encrypted format or whatever it was. So I removed sudo apt remove crypt setup dash uh, intro ram fs. Clearing all of those things out. So installing the Plymouth, um, removing the, the crypt setup uh, application, doing another sudo apt upgrade, that fixed everything. Then I went through and updated my multimedia codex. So everything there is uh, is kind of uh, exciting there. Let's see if I can remember how to get rid of the asterisks there off the top. Um, it is, 
is, I think it's in pseudo D, C, pseudo D, L, S. Okay, so if you want to get rid of the asterisks, then you need to remove this file here. Uh, zero PW feedback. So if we just, I don't think pseudo's going to work on this, but let's go ahead and give it a try anyway. Okay, so, well, I guess it does. That actually concerns me that I didn't have to enter. Oh, I already entered my password. Never mind. <laughs> like, why do I have to enter my password to do that? No. All right. So now you'll have to reboot the system. But now when you reboot the system, this um, you will not get the stars and the asterisks on the uh, on Linux Mint. So that's all you need to do to remove that. As far as our software and applications go, uh, you can see, I mean, if you were to just hand this to somebody, they would have a very hard time telling that this was not the basic Linux Mint. Now, I've not done a full range of testing quite yet. Um, let's go ahead and check software versions of things. So about Firefox, it looks like we're running uh, version 68.5 ESR. ESR is generally what we find on Debian. Um, I actually like that for sure myself. We have uh, replaced GIMP with drawing, of course. Uh, we do have the full LibreOffice suite. Let's check the versions of LibreOffice that we have. So we're running 6.1. So if you want to run your toolbar, you're not going to be able to run that without... Um, upgrading to a newer version using some shenanigans there. Uh, everything else, though, is pretty nice. We have uh, Celluloid. Uh, so all of the new things in Linux Mint 19 are all, are all kind of here. Uh, theming is going to work much the same way as it has in the past. Software Center is pretty much identical, so everything there is is good. Let's have a look at our system settings. Now, one area is you're not going to have the driver tools. So if you do have some weird uh, weird hardware that you need uh, proprietary drivers for, the driver's tool is something in the Ubuntu package base. That's not going to be in here. So you're going to have to fight with your drivers. However, Linux Mint Debian Edition does enable the non-free uh, repositories in Debian out of the box. So chances are on install, it's going to automatically install those things anyway. All of our theming is the same exact that we will find inside of Linux Mint. So you can kind of see that. And for the people who always are asking me about these scroll bars and things, this is in Cinnamon 4, it might be 4.1, whatever, but now under the themes, under your settings, you can actually use custom scroll bar width here as well. So if you do want to increase the size of the scroll bars, you can go ahead and make them really big, make them really small, whatever you might want to do with your scroll bars. Uh, that's actually where that happens to be over there. Everything else is very much Linux Mint. It's just a fabulous build, a fabulous system. Now, I do want to run this for a while. I would like to actually throw this on real hardware and give it a test before I would know for sure if it's just as good as uh, as the regular um, Ubuntu Linux Mint, but actually, that would be a really fun test to do. So let's see if there's uh, a couple different packages we could do here. Let's... Um, have a look at what GIMP version we have if we do actually want to install GIMP. Of course, we should see a flat pack version of GIMP and we should see a repository version of GIMP. So the first GIMP here that just says GIMP, I believe this one is, I think this is just from the basic repository. So this is 2.10.8. And if we back up, we see one, the GNU image manipulator program. This is actually the flat pack. So this guy is going to be the kind of rolling. So it's actually at this point in time, the same version. Now, what I will expect though, is if there's a new version of GIMP that comes out is that uh, the flat pack is going to update uh, faster. So if you want the absolute latest versions, do the flat pack. If you want the, the stability, you want to do the non flat pack version of that. Um, let's have a look at a few other things. Now there are going to be a couple issues that they have released in the, um, in the uh, release notes about running some K apps might give a problem. Check the release notes if you're having a problem with those. I'm going to check versions here. So we have 18.12 on Caden Live in the repository, and we're going to have probably a 19 something in this one here. I would definitely go for the 18 base instead of the 19 base because I think it's a better Caden Live personally. 
So uh, the options are good, though. So, man, it's looking really good, looking really sweet. I'm actually looking forward to playing with it a little bit more. So there is my brief analysis looking at Linux Mint Debian Edition Beta. Go ahead and have a download of it. Report the bugs that you find. This one issue that I found was relating to installing multimedia codecs. Two packages, one needed removed, one needed installed. I'm not sure if it was one or the other or both of them needed to be done out of the box. I'm not completely sure. But uh, that's kind of what my what my take was. I'm looking forward to trying this out a little bit more. I want to see if this is a good viable option as Ubuntu seems to be losing its mind a little bit more and more each day. So uh, those are my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are on Linux Mint Debian Edition in the comments down below.